This video tutorial is on creating a SQL Server sandbox development machine on a Microsoft Hyper-V virtual machine. Hyper-V is a free download from Microsoft's website. You can install it on Windows 8 and once you do that and load the Hyper-V manager you will see a screen similar to what we have here. Now what you're seeing on my screen is a list of virtual machines that I've already created. Your list will of course be in it will be empty. My host machine is called the Hydra. Your host machine will be whatever your computer's name is. So we're going to go ahead and create a virtual machine, but prior to doing that, we're going to create a virtual network switch that we will plug our virtual machine into once we have created it. The virtual switch gives us essentially a virtual network that our virtual machine and our host machine can use to communicate. We can also create additional virtual machines and put those on the virtual switch as well. The virtual switch that we're going to create is going to be an external virtual switch, meaning that it's going to completely share the network card that is in the host machine. So assuming that that network card is on the internet, then uh, it will share that. So to create the virtual switch, we go to the virtual switch manager. We click on virtual switch manager, which brings up the virtual switch manager tool. And uh, what you'll see is I've got a virtual switch created called Florida Keys. Now you, of course, won't have one. My Florida Keys virtual switch is the one that my virtual machines are connected to. This is an external type switch that the Realtek PCI card, which is a physical network card in the host machine, is virtually plugged into. So any virtual machine that I connect to the Florida Keys virtual switch then will be on public internet and will get a DHCP assigned IP address from my internet router and so forth. Now to create your own uh, new virtual switch. You just click on the new virtual switch uh, link at the top of that virtual switches um, section and choose the type of virtual switch either external, internal, or private. External is what we want to create here so that's what we will select. Now you just give your virtual switch an intuitive name assuming that it is on the public internet. I'm going to call this one public internet. And I then need to select the physical network device in my host machine that the virtual switch we plugged into. So again, I'm not going to create one. Um, we're going to use the Florida Keys one that I've already got created. Now I'll go ahead and create a virtual machine that we will plug into that virtual switch. So I'm going to go to the, click on that new button and choose new virtual machine. I'm going to give this new virtual machine an intuitive name. We'll call it SQL Server. We also need to select a file path in which to store the files associated with our virtual machine. Um, I'm going to just uh, retain the default settings. I now need to assign memory for my virtual machine. I'm going to assign 4 gigs. I would suggest you assign at least 2 gigs. And now we will select the Florida Keys network switch to which this virtual machine will be plugged in. Now I need to identify a virtual hard drive. Now we're going to create a virtual hard drive. So I need to select a file path for it. I'll maintain the default one. And we need to identify how we're going to install an operating system on this new virtual hard drive. Um, we could install one later. I'm going to go ahead and choose to install an operating system uh, from a boot CD DVD ROM. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify an ISO file that's on my uh, host hard drive. And that ISO file will become a virtual DVD ROM drive. So I've got my Windows Server 2012 ISO file evaluation version I downloaded from Microsoft's website. So I'm actually going to go ahead and select that install an operating system from a boot CD option and then browse to that ISO file. So here it is. That's what I downloaded from Microsoft's website. 
So I will simply identify that ISO file, then click Open, and we'll go ahead and click Finish to create this virtual machine. So what I'm going to have here is a virtual machine with an empty hard drive, but mapped to the virtual DVD-ROM containing the Server 2012 installation media. So I'm going to right-click and start that virtual machine. And uh, the next thing to do is then connect to it. Connecting to the virtual machine is quite similar to using remote desktop connection to connect to a server on the network. So connecting to it, and we now see the uh, virtual machine booted from the Server 2012 installation media. So I'm going to click through the installation routine for Server 2012. And uh, we're going to be sort of fast-forwarding and jumping ahead. We won't be watching file co files copy through this. But I'll go ahead and choose Standard Edition with a GUI. Accept the license terms and choose a custom install. This we see here is the uh, empty virtual hard drive and that's where we will install these files. So go ahead and let this installation routine run and through the magic of video editing we will skip ahead to the end of the file copy process and uh, go ahead and continue and finish this installation routine, not a whole lot to uh, talk about regarding installing Windows 2012 or Server 2012. Very nothing we need to do in particular to prepare it for SQL Server. Now this is going to be a standalone server. It will not be part of a domain. Okay, so we're rebooting here. And there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a a password for the administrator account. And finish that up. Okay, now then, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, log into it for the first time, and I'm going to go ahead and simply change the machine name to something more intuitive than the uh, uh, automatically assigned machine name. Then we're going to shut it down and map another virtual DVD drive containing the SQL Server installation media. So to change the machine name, I'm going to launch Control Panel and go to the System Applet, see the name of this computer, and uh, we'll simply change that machine name to SQL Server. I'm not going to reboot at this point. I'm just going to go ahead and shut down because I want to go ahead and map the uh, second DVD drive or virtual DVD drive. So I'll choose Restart Later, and then I'm just going to shut this machine down. Okay, now I'm going to go up to the settings. So if I go to the file settings menu, and then I'm going to go to the IDE controller one item and add a DVD drive. And again, we're going to map an image file. And I'm going to browse to the SQL Server 2012 installation ISO file and uh, simply map that as the virtual DVD ROM drive. Now, when we reboot the machine, it will see the DVD drive, the virtual DVD drive, with the SQL 2012 eval version installation media in it. So we'll go ahead and boot this machine, log back in. And browse to the new DVD drive. Again, we didn't need to really, there's nothing we need to configure in Server Manager at this point. So I'll go ahead and browse, open Windows Explorer, browse to the new DVD drive, and launch the SQL Server setup routine as we normally would. So 
So, go ahead and choose a new SQL Server installation. This will launch the installation routine, do the pre-installation checks, everything as per usual as if you're installing this on a regular physical computer. And once this completes, we will start the installation part proper. Okay. Now, Windows Firewall is uh, not configured for SQL Server traffic by default. There's a, another entry on my blog where I give you some a script that you can run, a batch file you can run to open up the ports on the local Windows Firewall on the uh, server for SQL Server and its associated services. So if you want to connect to SQL Server on the virtual machine from any other machine, like for example your host machine, you would need to open up the ports in the firewall in order to be able to do that. But if you just simply connect to the virtual machine by itself, you uh, won't need to do that because you'll be browsing everything or doing everything locally. Anyway, we'll go ahead and choose our default instance. Um, I had selected several of the uh, uh, SQL Server services and uh, we're going to go ahead and accept the default service accounts. We're going to make this as simple as possible and uh, we'll set the engine for mixed mode authentication. Type in a password for the SA account. A add the current user. The current user will be added to the sysadmin fix server role and we're going to go ahead and set analysis services. I did install analysis services by the way. We're going to leave it in multi-dimensional and data mining mode. We could certainly go back and install, after we do this, we can install another instance of analysis services in tabular mode. But for right now we'll just leave it multi-dimensional. And uh, I installed reporting services too. We'll go ahead and do that. We'll let that install with all defaults. And now we will let the file copy process run its course. And again, through the magic of video editing, we will skip forward in this. And uh, not too much else to do now. The installation routine will proceed as it normally would. Once it uh, finishes, we can connect to the engine or analysis services via our normal tools. Now again, you will have to open the firewall ports if you want to connect to this virtual machine from any other machine, including the host. But if you're just going to open, say, Management Studio locally, then uh, you don't need to open the firewall ports. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and open Management Studio. See, our, we've now got our suite of SQL Server products and tools installed. So Management Studio is going to connect to the engine for the first time. And here we go. So there we go. Now, we've now got a default installation of SQL Server. We should go get a copy of the, let's say, AdventureWorks database. We can have a database to experiment with. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and go to my blog and follow the link to Microsoft's website, or actually the CodePlex website, to download the AdventureWorks sample database. Now, the easiest thing to do if you're going to use Internet Explorer on this machine is to go to local server and turn off the Internet Explorer enhanced security configuration, which I'm doing here. So we're going to turn that off, and that'll make it easier to use Internet Explorer. Again, probably not the best thing to do in a production environment, for our, but for our development server, this will be okay. And we'll launch Internet Explorer. Go to the blog.sages.com website.
and uh, navigate to the link. So on the right hand side we'll look for other resources and uh, click that and within there find the link to the sample SQL Server databases including AdventureWorks. And this brings us to the CodePlex website where we can download AdventureWorks. So we will download a copy of AdventureWorks 2012 database, install that. It's a very simple installa uh, installation routine that we'll uh, use. And that is it. You've now got a complete development test server set up and ready to roll.